This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Hey guys, it is the Awesome Cast episode 352. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter in the Mayhem Studio here in Pittsburgh, PA, ready to talk technology, which has failed this city and uh, or at least this podcast and uh, such. Uh, video producer here in the area, fresh off of a trip, shooting some stuff out in Illinois, Peoria, and going to Nebraska. And old fans of the show should enjoy that I'm going to Nebraska of all places. With me in on the couch, very good considering things that are going on this week, is John Chichilla, our gadget guru from Big Bank International Esquire. How's it going? Good. Uh, well, Verizon it's... Fios, you have failed this Verizon, city. you have failed me. About an hour, about <clears throat> an hour and a half before the show, uh, I'm, I'm sitting there poking through some YouTube on my Apple TV, just trying to relax a little bit before we get into things. And uh, it stopped working. And all the internet stopped working, and that internet light was the orange. And we just had a storm here, so I thought it was probably related. There appears to not be an outage. Um, maybe something has happened to my wiring outside. I don't know. Uh, but uh, either way, uh, we uh, are without internet, so no fancy visuals for you guys. We, we have some hot spotting going on. We have a very rudimentary stream going on on Facebook Live, so people can join us. Um, so just got a nice shot of, of myself and producer Missy here, uh, that you guys can check out on there. And, uh, so we're just kind of, we were also supposed to have Cynthia Klosky on and, uh, she, she got moved to remote. And then of course this happened and then and, and I've tried for about, uh, 45 minutes here trying to figure out how we could patch stuff in and it doesn't seem to work very well on the, uh, hot spots. Plus we have like two bars down here, so it's, it's not that great. Are you a two bars down here? I am a two bars. Yeah, yeah. It's, well, we are in a basement in the side of a hill, so it's not great. Uh, but anyways, this is the awesome guys. The show must go on. We can still record with uh, everybody in-house here. Uh, the recorders still work. They don't require internet. You can check us out. We're over at awesomecast.com. Uh, you can uh, subscribe to us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, YouTube, and uh, Facebook for the video versions. And uh, please drop us a line at awesomecast at sorgatronmedia.com. Awesomecast on the Twitter. Check out the Awesomecast Facebook group. A lot of great discussion and stories through the week that we're sharing through there. And uh, also join us here live in some fashion at live.awesomecast.com uh, at 7 p.m. Eastern time almost every week. Uh, I think we're if if everything works out internet wise, we should be here um, live next week because um, I don't think it's going to work out for us to pre-record. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure it out. We'll, we'll have something. We may have a link on our Facebook page if we're not exactly going through Facebook at the time. So keep an eye out for that. And then that should be all the weird scheduling for a while. I think. I hope. Uh, but keep always keep an ear out on that. Uh, RiversHPGH.com and the405media.com are our friends in streaming that have been putting us out there and getting us to some new ear holes out there across the nation and around the world. Thank you so much for those guys for supporting us. And thanks to our Patreon supporters, patreon.com slash awesomecast, including Matt Weller at the Coffee Club $5 level and Mike Fedor at Mike Fedor Show at the dollar level. Uh, so uh, thanks, thanks a lot to them. Patreon.com slash awesomecast. You guys are uh, giving to the show and we really do appreciate it uh over here uh and, and follow those guys on the twitter um at uh, under, uh matt underscore weller with one t and mike fedor show on the twitter as well so now it's time for our awesome things of the week it, it's gonna be you know e3 just happened this week we haven't exactly spun up completely the gaming show there's a lot of technology happening so this applies here for sure um chilla i think this is the biggest well not the okay Part of this is the biggest thing because this X Xbox uh, announced some upgrades uh, this week. But uh, what what angle was getting you excited here? So so oddly enough, going back back far back in time, uh, Microsoft has announced backwards compatibility back to the Xbox Gen One console. So if you remember wow. the big black box, well, I guess the new one's still a black box. It's a, it's a, yeah, it's it's <clears throat> a lot of black box going on. Yeah, here. but they actually announced backwards compatibility. Um, and the discs 
the, the games that will be compatible, the discs will be compatible. Mm-hmm. Um, they will forward the certificates for any digital purchases. Um, wait, 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 were there a lot of digital purchases on like, that's, the original I don't, Xbox? I don't remember there being. I don't think so. But what, th- th- it was listed in the announcement that, that, that they would support any digital purchased content. Maybe DLCs or something at the time? Yeah, I don't know. But uh, but still, that's that's yeah. awesome that they're going to resurrect all that stuff because that's pretty much that. Like I remember when Halo Two, like they were finally shutting down the server for Halo Two, and there's, there was some guy that stayed on till it he went stayed on because well, no, they weren't going to let it go dark until the guy left. Mm-hmm. Like you know, you can't lock the door to the restaurant <laughs> if somebody's still in there sitting at a table. It's just unsafe, and that was the guy sitting at the table sipping water. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but so, no, that's amazing because there was. I mean, it wasn't like the biggest of the the con that console generation, but man, that was like there's some good games there, and they they, they called out like Crimson Sky. Of That's course, exactly so. what got me super excited was yeah. Crimson Sky. So, and of course, they re released them, but the original Halo. If you happen to have a disc or two of those, you know, I mean, that's awesome. Yeah, I'm I'm super I'm super excited to relive some of those games, and especially like Crimson Skies, and I'm hoping uh, what was the Shadow Run. I'm hoping they bring back some of the Shadow Run stuff. So now, so is we'll this is that. this is this going to be catalog wide? Like the disc will work, or that's what, the, that's what the one article I read said that the discs will work. So, okay. so it's using an emulation mode like they right. do for 360. So the biggest issue that that that's been for emulation is because they have not used the same even manufacturer's GPU. I believe they started with Nvidia. They had ATI. I'm sorry, AM, AMD. AMD. I guess uh, for the last. Two is that correct? Mm-hmm. And they'll be doing AMD for the the new Xbox One X, right? Which makes sense. This is compatible with all the other stuff because the biggest issue has been well, we did stuff with this that used proprietary, you know, things to that chip to the Nvidia chip. We can't bring that over easily. And if you remember, the first gen Xbox actually ran off of an Intel. Mm-hmm. I think it was like a Celeron processor. Something like that. It was like an 800 megahertz yeah. or something like that. It was it was basically a specialized PC. It used PC parts. Mm-hmm. So, um, I mean, that's why it was so great to, you know, hack at the time. And uh, 360 became a lot more specialized. I think it had a, was it an IBM CPU, I think, in there? That I'm, I can't, yeah, I think it was an IBM CPU. Mm-hmm. The, the interesting thing I'm... I'm I'm guessing they're not going to have too much of an emulation problem only because with that old of a CPU and GPU emulating that, I mean, you look at the the overhead is the overhead's not going to be huge. I mean, you look at, you can, you can successfully emulate Wii games on a newer PC nowadays. Right. And so I don't, the Wii was 10 years old. Yeah. Like, like I was thinking about that. Like, like, like the Zelda I got for the Wii is 10 years old. Uh, so, I mean, it's age. We've come a long way even in that technology, right? Yes, definitely. And I feel like some in some cases we've come a long way, but in other cases, like a lot of those systems have stuck around. Like, think about how long the 360 lasted. And there's still oh, people playing 360 and they're porting games Me? over from the 360. Yeah. Yeah. But, but, but again, I, I feel like that mm. generation of this generation doesn't feel like I, whenever I boot up my 360, it doesn't feel like last generation. And maybe just because I haven't had that much time on the new generation. And I, I have. I've played stuff at LFG. I've played some demo stuff. And, and I've played on people's consoles. And, like, it's not as, like, people, like, like the characters aren't super blocky compared to, like, when I went from PlayStation 2 to Xbox 360. Mm-hmm. Like, that was significant, right? And and this, I, I you know, I, I I just think this has been a problem for a while. That's why I have not been in a rush to upgrade. I also have plenty of games, and I'm cashing on the games for gold every month. Yeah, I so. mean, you, now you have this catalog, and that's what I hope. I hope they do. Obviously, there's the they're going to do the Netflix thing. So I'm hoping a lot of those titles mm-hmm. come into that. Mm-hmm. Pay pay think, one monthly price and get which the again unlimited catalog. I believe from the little bit I was looking at it already, um, it's a lot of 360 games, right? Mm-hmm. So, which isn't that a lot of what they're doing, at, at least to an extent, because I think PlayStation Plus does a thing where there's a lot of classic titles and they cycle in and out, and that comes with your subscription. So, like, it's partially that, but it's not the streaming thing like they're trying to do. 
because uh, they're trying to do that on live. Uh, I forget which company they bought. Uh, Gai- Gaikai, I think it was. I don't remember. Uh, where, where the game streams off of a remote server instead of downloading. Um, you know, I think that's, you know, uh, I, I think it's cool that there's there's those options there. And now both they kind of have a comparable service and a separate service uh, for those kinds of things. I, I think that Netflix of gaming is a really good idea. There's a lot of them that have been happening for PC uh, for years now, actually. So, and and for somebody that's a little more, I just want to play a lot of games. I don't want to, I don't need to get the thing when it releases. That's great. You know, like, I don't need to, it, it's that same idea of, I don't need to watch, you know, Wonder Woman when it comes out. I'll wait for it on DVD or I'll wait for it when it pops up on Netflix or HBO or something. You know, which that mm-hmm. even that window is getting a lot shorter, of course. Like Doctor Strange is on Netflix. That's weird. That was, yeah, out, that was out in November. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, but but that's another story entirely. Um, but no, I, I think I think this is great and and a really kind of uh, and, and a lot of the story has been um, this isn't something. There's something about a percentage of people that play these is really small, but they're still just hey, we want to be good to the gamers, right? So, which good for them. Well, I think it's a value added bonus, even if you're not going to play every one of them or whatnot. It's just nice to know that that's an option. Mm-hmm. And like games with gold, that's a guaranteed four games a month you're getting for free. They may be back yeah, catalog. Five, actually. Is it five? There's always like an Is extra. There an there's thing? like an extra mm-hmm. Xbox One game that they okay. do for the entire month, I think. Okay. And then like the one, the one for each console every half a month. So okay. like you yeah you end up with like five games a month for the most part so and again like I'm sitting there collecting them and I'm not sitting down and playing because I don't have an Xbox One mm-hmm. you know uh, something that you know that I really want to play I'll go and get and download and, and pop into for a little bit on the 360 but I have, it just gives me more reason not to want to do PlayStation mm-hmm. and it's I, it's great for lock in definitely and I don't know if you want to get into the One X stuff now or if you want to save that for a little bit later but my my main thing was that backwards compatibility one more reason if you were already in the ecosystem or maybe you weren't in the ecosystem and there was a game that all your buddies talk about being an old game obviously you probably don't have the original xbox then or don't want to go out and buy one just for that right so right and i want to get into mm-hmm. that and i want to get into the technology of that specifically because i think that's where more where i want to focus this show on uh but uh i i kind of have another gaming social kind of thing uh for my awesome thing of the week i know i didn't move it up here but uh pokemon goes anniversary events are taking place and and they announced some upgrades to go along with it um now i am someone that i actually found myself uh in peoria last week a day early and found myself with nothing to do because of circumstances uh but uh it's amazing when i'm like oh that's fine i still i I went down to the waterfront in peoria downtown peoria didn't know where the hell like i should go what to do um and i found a parklet area and i just followed the pokestops and went for a walk Right along the river, you know, the nice recreational parts. Uh, uh, followed the Pokestops to say, okay, this must be something worth walking to, you know. Mm-hmm. And and I spent like like two two or so hours out there doing that, and finally found a restaurant that that was pretty decent, um, and made a day of it because I was playing Pokemon. You know, I was going for a walk, but I was playing Pokemon. <laughs> you know, did you unlock any? Did you unlock any new ones to the Pokedex? Uh, no, I haven't seen a new one in, in a while at this point. But uh, we, especially with all the traveling I've done the last couple months, I think I've kind of maxed out mm-hmm. my discoverability. And I need to get my evolves up. You know, um, I'm getting stuff that like is already evolved. That has been happening a lot more. Mm-hmm. And then I get something to involve to it. So, but uh, and 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 I've descri- described things like that. And I'm you know it's kind of my way to discover and and. And get out more, especially in these new locations that I get to visit. And uh, it's been it's been a good opportunity for me. And plus, well, every time I talk about that, somebody's like, "People still play that." I'm like, "Yes, I do." And and my you know Chachi does too. And he's like three or two away or whatever from completing the Pokédex. He says, "Wow." So well, he says now, I don't know if it's the complete Pokédex, but he says it's everybody that that he knows is attainable. Like I don't think he counts the international ones okay although he's got a really good thing where he said (laughs) sorry a poster just fell on him uh very weird poster just fell on him uh you know it's one of those where um i I guess if you go to a certain point in florida you can pick up some of them from the caribbean 
Okay. Like the geofence bleeds over or something like that. But anyways, the story of the awesome thing uh, uh, is actually the uh, Pokemon Go anniversary events. Um, They're doing an event in Chicago and several small ones. Uh, They're going to do something on July 22nd. Uh, Not many details, but it's going to be uh, in the city's Grant Park, which makes me want to kind of scoot up to to, to, to Chicago there. Uh, But uh, other than that, they're, they're doing a lot of updates. Multiplayer is supposed to be coming up. They might be, uh, look, sounds like they're going to shut down the gyms for a period while they upgrade. So get your Pokemon gym fighting in now. Well, that, and if you're, if you're, in, if you're, if you own a gym right now, you're going to get kicked out. And then what, the, one of the things that I was happy to hear is I guess some people have kind of scripted, script to attack the gyms mm. where if they put a high, high powered Pokemon there, if they get, if they get beat, it reattacks and it's kind of keeps them at that gym at all times. And there's something that they can do to, when they upgrade the gyms. They're, they're going to get out of this that. from okay. happening again. Cause I, I did go through an epic <clears throat> battle with some partners uh, uh, at the uh, uh, Dallas Fort Worth airport while I was waiting for my <laughs> uh, plane delays on Sunday. Uh, so, so I mean, that's still a great thing to, you know, to pass the time, do something, not be bored at an airport, you know, uh, uh, you know, fantastic for that. Um, they're also going to update. They're going to do some more in-game events, and uh, there was something else that they're throwing on here. Oh, so the the solstice event uh, is going to be running from the June thirteenth. Is that t- that's today? Today. That's today. I need to get out there. Uh, through June twentieth. Um, that will include increased encounter rates for a certain Pokemon again. And you know, we've seen these. We've seen like the Earth events, the Water mm-hmm. events excuse me <laughs> things like that and uh um but no i, I it's a year old I, I think it's still strong not as much as it was and, and it's going to be i you know what i still see a decent amount of people whether it's during during lunch or in the mornings like because i come out of the t- train station on grant street and there's that pokey stop right there at the melon um yeah park. yeah at the, at the fountain over there. there's Still, people crowded around there all day long, mm-hmm. and that that Pokestop changes hands all day long. Well, battling, well, yeah. battling, and I mean, there's <clears throat> people into it. I mean, you're also seeing those those. Um, it's it's got to be hard for somebody new to get into it now, because you go to those those gyms and they start at two thousand. They they did something to level that out though, didn't did they? they? If you're if you're a low attacker, they do something to to bump down the gym. I'm guessing you're not going to conquer it in. Kind of like one, how, like, because I know one swipe, but it's... like, like, uh, you know, I've been beside somebody who's like Missy's been a higher level f- than me for a while, and we'll we'll get the same Pokemon, and hers is like up in the six hundreds, and mine was fifty, you know, or you know, vice versa. Like, like, there's an interesting math that's happening around that too. So, yeah, I think it's 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 plus all these announcements about the the AR. Uh, coming up here, I think there's going to be a, a lot of reasons <clears throat> to jump into it. Uh, plus, I'm sure they're going to do events. Um, it was just announced that there's going to be a quote proper uh, Pokemon game coming to the, the Nintendo Switch this mm-hmm. week. Uh, so, uh, you know, plus whatever other interesting Nintendo things they might connect this thing with. I mean, there's some really interesting announcements coming out of even Nintendo this week around E3 that makes me really excited for the Switch. Uh, so, if you can get one. If you can get one. So, well, thankfully, I'm not on the, in the market to get one soon. So, uh, we'll see at Christmas, maybe, if we're lucky. So, <laughs> apparently, I have a new Xbox One I need to keep an eye on. So, um, that, so I can play all the games I already have. But, uh, anyways, in the, in the meantime, secondary awesome thing, Monument Valley 2 came out around WWDC. Completely grabbed that. Finally played through the first level. So, I, I missed that game. I missed that game a lot. What was the other game? Uh, Land's End. Uh, I just want to throw a shout for that. I don't know if I talked about it on the show when we were, I was first getting into Gear VR, but I believe it's from the people from Monument Valley. Mm-hmm. It's on the Gear VR, and it's kind of that puzzly kind of thing. It, it was, it was, you know, not terribly long, um, but really a really fun playthrough. And it's it's a couple bucks. It might be five mm-hmm. bucks on on the Gear VR store uh, if you happen to be on that as well. Um, I'm sure they have it on other VR systems too. So, at that note, uh, I can't show you. Well, I, actually, I don't know. Arms length here. Hold on, hold on. You guys. Oh, yeah. Our good friends. The well-eaten slice on Broadway. Thank you guys for supporting Pittsburgh Podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza. And hell, they, they actually even threw in a extra uh, uh, cheese pizza. Uh, it's nice being regulars because they know we're there whenever there's a pizza mess up. 
and we we don't mind pizza mistakes because pizza mistakes are still delicious. Uh, so thank you to our friends uh, Slice on Broadway here on uh, Beachview, right on Broadway Avenue, um, along the tracks here in Beachview, as well as on Main Street in Carnegie, PA, and down PNC Park, the home of the Pittsburgh Pirates. How are the Pirates doing this season? Are we are we okay? I no penguins. I don't penguins. Know. It's just we're, we're all in the penguins fog. Therefore, there's a parade tomorrow. Uh, so uh, then maybe we'll start caring about 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 the uh, 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 baseball. What's up? You forgot to tell people about the opportunity to check out the perfect pepperoni pizza this weekend. There is an opportunity this weekend to check out the perfect pepperoni pizza. There is when I I come home and it says hey. We're doing a pizza party next weekend. I was like, oh, that sounds like an amazing idea. Uh, so, no, we're going to do a Sorgatron Media pizza party. It's going to be Sunday at the Beachview location. <clears throat> our, our location, we can say. Um, and I'm pulling up the information. It is, it is, what page is that through? It's through Sorgatron Media? Okay. But it's also YouTube podcasts has it as well uh so join us a little bit of a meet and greet go in with your friends on some pizza uh 1 to 3 p.m slice on broadway beach you've been looking for a miss uh, uh, uh you've been looking for a, a reason to come down to slice on broadway and check it out uh we'll be hanging out there and uh mad mike from the wrestling mayhem show who i believe has also been on the show a time or two uh will be in from from new york to uh, uh visiting he, he's here for other th- he came exclusively for this party we'll just say that uh <laughs> and uh and a few other people riz is going to be a part of that uh of course we'll be there too uh and and others so chill chill i think is i know it's father's day so yeah i won't I, chill, chill is going to be we're doing, doing a, we're doing a barbecue so i won't, unfortunately won't be able to be there that's right that's right but uh but that, but you know if you don't have the father day father's day plans or at least in the early afternoon swing by 1 to 3 p.m. uh this sunday uh june 18th and uh and uh grab some pizza with us so uh let's get into oh i'm so discombobulated with this internet thing Things are not where I expect them to be. Let's uh, let's touch base again on the Xbox um, technology wise. So it's an interesting thing because we're not. This isn't a new console that we are just replacing everything, right? Like we're used to. Like we're they're kind of step. Well, PlayStation's already done this. Well, they announced their uh, play, PlayStation Four I forget Pro. What, Pro, and that had 4K and and was it more was it, was it more capable for the VR part, or was that just it was uh, 4K. Mm-hmm. So the the PlayStation Pro brought in 4K and it brought in the VR components, a little bit faster processor and much higher uh, graphics engine on there. It's interesting because everyone went from clock speed when the PlayStation 4 came out. It went to a went from whatever megahertz gigahertz ratings to we can do 4.8 teraflops. Yeah, you know what? <laughs> what, what, what did you notice? That's the discussion around WWDC too. Yes, there was. There's a lot of. We're up to the teraflops era of computing, and it's and it, we we heard we saw that with Google I/O's thing and all their their VR and all their AI is measured in. Uh, well, what's their Tensor Tensor whatever mm-hmm. system, and theirs is measured in in in, in compute power. So it was interesting to see that the. the PlayStation 4 Pro is rated at 4.2 teraflops, whereas the Xbox One X is rated at 6 teraflops of performance. The other spec difference that I saw, um, and obviously we haven't fully seen the Xbox One X in the wild, um, the older Xboxes, PlayStations, most of the devices outside the Switch sit at like an 8 gig 8 gig of RAM, the Xbox One X is 12 gig. I don't know if it's a future proof thing or if they have something in mind for it. Well, I think I think the, the, the conversation I saw I saw some clips notes from the from the uh, Microsoft Xbox event and it was a lot of we want to give basically they want to raise the ceiling, right? Like they want to make sure developers have a lot of developers can do what they want to do. Yeah, it's not a it may not necessarily be they have specific plans. I mean, there's something they're like, hey, if we did this, can you fill that? You know, I mean, think about uh, uh, early PlayStation uh, uh, games that could barely, you know, 
fill more than a gig on a DVD, right? Mm -hmm. Versus now we're at a point where GTA five was two DVDs, you know, it, 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 you hit that, you hit that, that ceiling. And, and if they can just raise that as much as they possibly can, it's kind of the, um, when you up, when you build your PC, what do you get as much as you can afford, right? Mm -hmm. As much Ram as you can afford. But it, I guess when I'm building a PC nowadays, unless I'm, it's a Mac, sometimes I will go under, I, I won't spend the money up front, and I figure I can always add it later. Yeah, but you're not buying a Mac for PC and video edit, or uh, for gaming and right, video edit. Right, but even on a PC side, I, w I would, I may go 16 gig today knowing that I can jump to 32 tomorrow. Right. Now, what I would right. say is, is I would say make sure it's, I don't have to replace the memory I have and I can add to it versus, right, you know what I right. mean? So, so I mean, basically they figured out this is how much we can cram into $500 of a console, which is apparently, and like some of the, some of the things I've been reading is um, Microsoft can't explain why their, their 4K machine is $100 more than the PlayStation one, which is weird because isn't this the same mistake they kind of made at the beginning of the console generation? Yeah, and I, it's weird too because then... It, somebody from Microsoft said, you know, this isn't the, this isn't the gaming system that everyone's going to buy no. or the majority is going to no, buy. No, no. They, they, they still plan on marketing how, the, the one S how heavily. many, how many of us have 4k TVs? I, and that's, I think that's a very valid point. I do, mean, do you own a 4k <laughs> TV in the future? I do. I have, well, I have a 4k monitor, okay. which is big enough to be considered a TV. Right, right. But I mean, you don't have 4k in your living room. And Not, I mean, I will Thanksgiving time. Yes, I, I mean, will, the person that has the 4K TV and the amazing sound system and just puts a lot into their entertainment system. This is for them. Also, probably the HomePod. Uh, but that's another story. But uh, but, but, but my problem, my, the one spec that I think everyone's skipping out on and I hear a lot of people saying, you know, go get external drives is. Why? Why aren't we seeing SSDs in these? Uh, like that we're still oh, seeing cost cost okay, you're so then for an extra hundred bucks give me a you want the option i want the option okay i i think that's the biggest thing that i see and the other the other funny part is all the hard drives are all 5400 rpm drives Ooh. so so that's the interesting thing that i that i mean anywhere where i read like the first thing to do a lot of people recommend get the smallest get the smallest cheapest version of the console and go out and spend the extra money on an, an SSD and an enclosure. Because mm -hmm. like the Xbox, I can throw all my games on the external enclosure on an SSD, and it's going to be... I need to remember this tip when I finally <laughs> buy my Xbox, by the way. Because, I mean, that's what most people are doing, right? Because right. they're, they're just throwing throwing an SSD connector on there, and, and you're good to go. Right. Uh, it, it makes sense. And you're not paying that 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 tax to... Because, you know, the buy of Microsoft branded is, like, ungodly, right? Mm -hmm. Even though it's just... Their special enclosure, probably. I, I, I don't know. I haven't seen what it's the Xbox different colors. It is different. <laughs> <green. laughs> it's different color. Okay. And I think it has the Xbox logo on it. Oh. I mean, it, and I think it's pre-formatted because I think you have to partition and format for Xbox games versus media. Right. To kind of secure you plug that content. The, but, but you plug the drive in, and, and what's what it does, right? Like anything else, you know. Yeah. I, I pop a card into my my canon vixia and it says oh wait i gotta initialize this which means making sure things are right for you know their format and here's 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 the problem i have at a glance well, okay you're giving me all this compute power but you're telling me every game that's going to be released is going to be runnable on the current box Right. Maybe I'll uh, load time times may be different. There may be some digital content. I feel like in about three years, you're going to start I, when. OK, when we get to that point, when they get to a certain threshold where they want to push it. Right. Um, you, I think you will have 4K exclusive. But but I, but you can get 4K on the one S. Games, yeah. Wait, we were, was then why are we? And, that, and that's my point. So the one S, the big, the big thing was the jump to 
compare with the PlayStation and be able to handle 4K. Oh, oh, the One S has 4K. The original didn't. Correct. Oh, and then this is just more on top of that. Yes. Wow. Now the other weird thing so, that, I, that I thought was so the <clears throat> the One S and the One X can do 4K. They can do HDR Blu-ray. Um, right. Yeah. Both. So bo- yeah, I saw that both of them can can watch uh, uh, 4K content. Yes. So video content. But the PlayStation 4 Pro can't. The Blu-ray side of it can't do 4K and and 4K and HDR. Huh. So it's only 4K gaming on the PlayStation side. On the Xbox side, it's 4K and video. But they're doing that on the cheaper console. Right. <laughs> oh, this is getting like, confusing. It's it's really thought... conf- it's 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 that whole it's the whole what what console I'm going to the Switch. <laughs> <laughs> There's one Switch. Do I want the one with the gun game or the one with the raving rabbids or whatever, yeah. right? What, uh, what color what color Joy-Con do, do I, I want? I want a blue one. <laughs> I I don't even know, right? So, uh no, that's and that's confusing cuz then then you're you you go and you see like five different models of an xbox one the poor parents at christmas time right and it's man that, that's that's tough that is tough and the same with playstation too right because it, it, it's got several models plus plus how many gigabytes you want um well that's 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 where we've gone i mean we've really we really have just become the consoles have all the problems of the PC, you know, for the most part. You have to install your games. You have this. Well, in three years, is there going to be the Xbox One XS? Don't count it out. I mean, I think this this shows <clears throat> it, it's not I buy an Xbox 360 and I'm good for the generation. And, and that's been the discussion. I, You know, is this going to be a thing where um, you just have these phases? We have the Xbox One S. It could be at a certain point. We get the H, you know, we have the one X and then we have the one, let's call it E because we're going with the Tesla thing where we'll just go with that. Uh, if you know the joke, uh, you know, it, it, and that's the one above. And then once like two consoles out have been released, they stop supporting the old one with new games. Mm-hmm. Right. All those new games are up compatible. So you got a reason to buy a new one. You can so, go all the way back so, to the Xbox so, original. So now you have this sliding scale happening of compatibility and then but the cool thing will be because we just went all the way back to the original xbox it's kind of like i know it's about to change uh soon for the most part i can play the games that i bought on my first iphone now on the recent iphone Mm -hmm. i know this is going to change here with ios 11 but you've had that sliding scale of compatibility i why am i not going to an android i don't want to rebuy all those apps and games Mm -hmm. Why am I moving from Xbox to PlayStation platform? A platform, not a console. A platform is because now going. But there's the, the exclusives. But now, but, now, I mean, but, the exclusives. There's exclusives. I see but going from Xbox to PlayStation is like going from from PC to Mac, mm-hmm. from Windows to Mac, to Linux to to Windows. It, 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 it's it it is that platform and and that buy in that you have. Mm-hmm. So, which is genius, because then again, you have the lock in, right? You're not hitting the reset button every um, whatever a generation is going to be, because there is no that generation doesn't matter anymore. The the thing that I like about this, and I I didn't see any of the, I'm guessing the OS. I didn't see any OS footage. I saw some game clips and stuff. I'm guessing the OS is going to be identical across the one line. Which I think is pretty nice. So if you know, like the 360 has its interface, right? The one because it's everything's going to run Windows 10 underneath the covers, and it resembles, last I knew, like that Metro. It's start like the Metro and the what are they interface. Fluent? They're yeah. using the they're starting to adhere to the Fluent design, and, right. and stuff right. like the, that. So the, the boxes and the moving stuff, yeah. yeah, yeah, and the transparency and things like that. The other thing that I want to see about the that I didn't, I, I heard you can use a converter, but how? Still, the one of the favorite things about the Xbox One that's near and dear to my heart is the Connect capabilities. The original, the original shipping version before they lowered the price, you had to buy the Connect. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to see what they do with you, the, with the One X. Does the One X have a microphone? Um, 
Well, the microphone was built into the connect for the connect piece. Right. And I've heard that you can use a converter dongle to get the connect to work on the one X. Okay. But I don't know. So you still have compatibility in there. and everything. So that's, that's good. Well, let's go from that to, to you know, we're talking about upgradability, um, a, a kind of a little bit of a revelation this week. Hey, uh, IMAX have upgradable RAM and CPUs. Uh, for the longest time, well, you know, I, I bought, you know, the, the, the rule was buy whatever except for the RAM as far as your MacBook Pros, as far as your uh, Mac Minis. The Mac Minis were the last one that were upgradable for this and very easily upgradable, by the way. It just like pops off the bomb. You're good. Mm -hmm. You have to open that. that, that well, you got the you have the silver one with the black bottom. The yeah. Thin. Yeah. It's like a 2011. That's not yours is like the second gen of the 2011 because I think I have the first gen 20, like the early 2011. I think you have like the late 2011. Or okay. Maybe mine's a late 2010. I actually had the thicker case with the white top. Okay. And mine, you had to use a spackle putty we have knife one of, to uh, cut around the... We, like, we, to we do have one of those around, but it's a G5. Okay. <laughs> so, but I think... Mine's would, a Core 2 Duo. Yeah, but. yeah. It, but like, I think it, they, they kept that design for a little bit after they upgraded the Intels. But uh, but but they're back to it. Like, again, you kind of got to get in there. But uh, they, uh, iFixit tore down the 21.5-inch uh, iMac with 4K display, which I think is the one that now starts at 1299 and found the user-replaceable user RAM sticks and replaceable CPU. Um, the first one since uh, that would be upgradable since 2013. I mean, this is even, like, for a client, we bought one around 2013, like a nice big 27-inch iMac. And I was like, all right, you buy this. And then here, here's the RAM upgrade for you to buy. I'm seriously going to save you about $300 uh, and install it myself, which was easy because you popped off the bomb. You're good to go. I don't know if it's as easy on, on these ones necessarily. I think you do have to get into it. Um, the so, so, and I think they're saying the 27 inch iMac had a user replaceable RAM. Apple used uh, soldered in RAM sticks in recent models of its smaller iMacs. So, so they still had that. Um, and of course, still uh, MacBooks and MacBook Pros are not currently upgradable. And, and MacBooks, especially the, their design, is probably even less able to to open that thing up uh, since it's more kind of uh, MacBook airish, I guess. Uh, so between this and i'm really excited to see what i i'm so happy i know i won't afford it but i'm so happy imac pros are a thing that exists in the world that's just a, a positive thing for my video industry around it right it you know just show that there's going to be some future in that and i can't wait to be able to pick up an imac pro when the next imac pro comes out and i can get on a deep discount <laughs> so did you see the top the, the top the top uh, the high watermark. For... I've been hearing. I've been hearing numbers. What, 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 what did you find out in your research here? So because it starts at five thousand dollars when this thing comes out later this year, and it's it's high end hardware, right? It's it's not it's no slouch. Yeah, I heard. I heard that with the eighteen core upgrade, the hundred and twenty gig RAM upgrade, um. The 16 gig Pro Vega video card and the four terabyte SSD upgrade. That's an ATI card, isn't it? The uh, video card. I think it's, it's an NVIDIA G oh, TX NVIDIA. Okay. Titan X. Wow. Um, six gig and 12 gig memory to reach its estimate. Um, grand total $17,299. Wow. Now, I, obviously, you're not going to be. Most people don't need this. Um, Pixar is going to get a few of those. I'm sure Pixar. I mean, um, yeah, VRP, like that's, yeah. that's who's buying that. That's who's buying these. Like, like this like, is not your. Con I, I, the bank isn't buying right. this. Okay? The bank's not the, buying the, the, Your the, average consumer is not buying this. The accountant this. isn't buying this. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you're not. Like, podcasters shouldn't be buying this. Yeah. It it's just doesn't make sense on just you're doing high level work and you maxed out an iMac and 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 still choking that thing um because you're doing something super complex in like apple motion or after effects yeah you know th 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 there you go and that's comparable now with that s uh, surface studio pro that that microsoft does mm -hmm. not as fancy screen stuff going on but you just buy a giant ipad to sit beside and you're good to go well i'm interested to see too that one of the things they touted was the 
um, new file system. I'm interested to see what that does to things like Final Cut. Yeah, I'd like to see too. Because they're touting yeah. that that's going to make a huge performance boost to the way Final Cut operates. So I think that'll be interesting. If that means if that means like my old 2013 is going to get a little more juice out of it, not that I really feel behind, mm-hmm. you know. I mean, it, it, it's still as, as good as ever. But uh, yeah, no, I think it's it's a good it's a good role. Um. So here's some uh, it, weird weird stories. But uh, first of all, SoftBank, who I think th- don't they own a bunch of cell phone carriers? Yeah, SoftBank like it's like a tech conglomerate yeah. something. Uh, they apparently are buying Boston Dynamics. That that is the company with all of the scary robots that we're pretty sure is going to kill us all uh, from Google Alphabet, technically. Um, and it has a quote vision of catalyzing the next wave of smart robotics. So I don't know if it's more unsettling that something like SoftBank owns on the Google or not, but uh, but that that's a move that happened. Um, there there was and and there was talk when Google bought it now Alphabet of course that when they purchased them there was a problem because Boston Dynamics had these uh, military contracts and. And these military contracts, and and that's kind of outside of the purview of what Google likes to do. They they don't do military contracts. Um, so there was already like so it's been kind of a weird relationship it seems uh, for a while. So, um, and this one uh, over on motherboard I thought was really interesting. There's a Russian vending machine that will sell you fake likes. You all know those fake accounts that yeah. you know massive like you know I need to I need to make sure I have like a thousand Instagram likes and stuff like this and it's it's a vending machine that you connect to your account and do it a hundred likes will cost you just eighty nine cents by the way um, by the way if you're in Russia and I know we've had somebody on the show back in the day that lives in Moscow uh, if you run into this please don't authorize your account in this thing <laughs> I, th- this is a horrible idea and and buying likes is not a is not a great thing. Um, or uh, ethical, um, amongst other things. Uh, so <laughs> it's it, it was just one of those weird oddball things that I, I, I saw rolling around the internet this week. Uh, and producer Missy just dropped in something from uh, our mayor, Bill Peduto. A new interactive map allows you to track and search uh, PGH H2O's information on curb box inspections for lead pipes this is a big issue here in the in the city because there's been a lead water issue going on for a while and they are uh attempting to address it and uh it looks like what do i understand wait what it, he's popping off hold on a second there you go what's that i'm looking at it kind of like it's the snowplow tracker yeah but for the lead water or the lead in water issue there you go. I see nobody addressing our neighborhood. Our neighborhood doesn't have an issue. Yeah, that's why I didn't think it did. Like no. it, it's 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 mostly like like yeah, it's mostly like more in further in city like and middle the other side m- middle yeah. and north side like like yeah. I think we're actually serviced by an entirely different water company for the actual water supply. Therefore, that didn't like the changes did not apply to us. So we are safe. Yes. Even though everybody seems to want to get water filters from our fire department for some reason on the facebook page i'm on i don't know but uh but there you go so uh that's good i mean it's it's been an ongoing issue a lot of controversy it's good that you kind of see a a visual inspection of of what's going on there so um at that point anything else chilla that i missed no i think that i think that wraps up everything i think we did address everything with very minimal (laughs) internet. So thank you. Thank you, everybody, who's joined us. A, a couple of you have joined the, my very mediocre uh, Facebook Live happening up here with just me and produce, producer Missy in the shot. Hello. Hello. Look, using a, oh, um, I, oh, we upgraded our internet for our cell phone, and we'll, we'll let you know how that goes. Uh, we, what, did, what, did we, what did we bite on? Because we had a internet issue where we found we were using a lot of internet this weekend. I told you I was using a lot of internet. And blew through our 30 gigabyte plan. In two days. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm thinking. You you got 
fit with an update. Uh, no, 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 no. no, no. Uh, somebody. He was misinterpreting what I was telling. Somebody him. was streaming our content at our con booth the entire weekend of Steel City Con. Ah, because that was yes. what was getting people to check out our website. Right, because it, it, it was experimenting. It worked. She went with it, and and so we blew through our thirty gigabytes. And I'm like, oh my god, I have no internet. And I'm in the middle of a field <laughs> trying <laughs> trying to film cars, and I'm just like, just just bump us up to the next one. And we ended up with unlimited plus on AT and T, which includes free HBO, which is a little redundant, but that's fine. We got free HBO. It was like thirty bucks more a month or something. Uh, so we are well beyond that twenty two gigabyte thing. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what happens. I, mean, I understand that the throttling isn't straight up throttling. It's you're just not first in line. Okay. Right? We'll find out when we blow through 100 gigabytes this month because we're on track. Because now we're <laughs> streaming and operating this entire thing. And I'm to, if I don't get the internet up tonight, I'm going to have to upload these shows somehow. And there's my that's, phone. That's yeah. That's and, how you're and plus do it. I've been streaming this entire hour on Facebook Live. Um, so we're gonna push it. Plus I got another trip, and I did not get a good hotel again this time. So I'm probably gonna live off my cell phone again for everything. Uh, including maybe next next week's podcasting. So, hey, AT&T, <laughs> you're, well, you're going to love me this month. I'll have to ask this guy what he got at work because he kind of lives far from the road and can't get anything but DSL to his house. And he said that he has switched to an AT&T data connection. Yeah. But it's not like what it's not like a tether plan and it's not like a MiFi device. It's an actual card. You have to put in a router. Huh. But it's Wi-Fi. Or it's cell. It's cell. Yeah. But you put the car, but it's only 30 bucks a month. What? Yeah. So, I mean, if you would take one of these routers with you. Yeah. You'd have four ports. Yeah. And Wi-Fi. Yeah. That would get for 30 bucks a month that would go with you. Please. Let's do it. Let's do it. Now, the only thing I will say is it's not. It may not be. It's it's. You're getting down speed. I think he's like it's twenty meg. Not as much up. It's twenty meg down, but only like five up. Well, even I, jeez, I I just I was speed testing. You get like forty gigs down on LTE. Mm-hmm. I keep forgetting how damn fast this thing is. Like it gets to the point. Sometimes when I'm on my house Wi-Fi, I knock off the house Wi-Fi because I'm like my twenty five up and down isn't fast <laughs> enough. It's just like how freaking ridiculous that is. The the one thing that surprised me, that, and I didn't realize it was a setting. It was one of the things we'll probably cover in a tip. Um, Samsung actually has a setting called Download Booster, which binds your cell connection with your Wi-Fi connection. Oh jeez! So you get both. Oh geez! Now I hope mean I don't on, want to shoot through unlimited. our data plan. Yeah, yeah. But hope, hope you're on unlimited. Yeah, if you're on unlimited, I mean that's yeah. perfect. And I was worried because well, the reason I didn't jump on unlimited before because they were they knocked out your tethering, but the yeah. one that Missy found actually gives us ten gigabytes of tethering. Not oh, that's much. nice. So it's like which, yeah, you know, okay, maybe we'll have a problem with that tonight. But the, like typically, I don't think we. Well, she that's mostly what she kind of blew through on, I guess technically, but uh, right. Because you tether it to the iPads and push that. So, again, hey, AT&T, <laughs> we're up to the challenge. And let's see. You just need a cellular iPad. I, I, I have one, but it's Verizon. Uh, so, uh, yeah, yeah, there's that. Um, so, we'll see how this first month goes. And then we'll let the rest of the family know that we have unlimited and so they can watch whatever they want. Uh, so, <laughs> but anyways... Uh, that's been our adventures this week in technology. Uh, as, as usual, please check out everything at awesomecast.com. Hopefully next week we have the internets of some sort so we can do, well, that's right. We're, we're remote, but, uh, check us out here at live.awesomecast.net or on the Facebook page or wherever we decided to stream from this week. Uh, or watch the tweets on, on Tuesday night, 7 PM Eastern time in yeah. some fashion. And what? And hang out with us and have some come pizza. hang out with us and have some pizza at slice on broadway 1 to 3 p.m this sunday sunday come hang sunday, out sunday sunday sunday, 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 sunday. john chichilla hey that's me john chichilla uh chilla on the twitter john chichilla on the facebook uh chilla photo on the deviant art come talk tech come, come talk mobile chilla tech tech net jen chilla tech yep, there we go and thank you, everybody. I'm at Sogatron on the Twitter. You can follow my Instagram adventures on Sogatron on there. And I, I share over the videos for that. Uh, some people have been giving me feedback. I guess they've been watching my travels uh, over the last week. 
um, for, for, for some of the work I've been doing. Um, it gets very boring on the weeks that I, I'm not traveling because it's just like, yep, there's me sitting at my desk editing this podcast. So I try to put something out. Um, and uh, and check out all the great podcasts at SorgatronMedia.com. And thanks to everybody that said hi to Missy and Riz at the table at Steel City Con this past weekend at the Sorgatron Media booth. Uh, thank you to our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.